These days, you have to have the view that there's grey um, corruption at the top, uh, no doubt from the top to the bottom, but um, particularly at the top. And uh, we are warned with this, be not many masters, for unto you is the greater condemnation. So um, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking saviour, saviour. So doth a little folly um, him that is in reputation for wisdom and honour. So um, at the top, again, you have to have the view that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So um, with this, it is a good thing really to review verses largely about what's called taking gifts and uh, bribery at the top. Now bribery and taking gifts could come in the form of um, promotion and wages. So um, it might not be presented to a person as being bribery and taking of gifts, but all being said, it could very well boil down to just that. <clears throat> so um, with this in mind, it's good to review um, these verses here, largely on the subject of bribery and taking gifts. And uh, it starts here, I've got a list of um, verses here. <coughs> and uh, it starts with, um, let's go Exodus 23, verse 8. And this would have been um, Moses speaking. And thou shalt take no gift. For the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous, so taking a gift. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribe. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Well, I look that word rest up. <clears throat> and uh, that word is a word that kind of means you can have your own um, interpretation on things and you can kind of force people by your own um, interpretation of um, said things and kind of twist a person's arm up his back in order to get that person or people to do whatever you want them to do. So thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, which at the top there's a lot of men, man pleasing going on from the top to the bottom, to be fair, neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. So again, bribery and taking gifts and having your own interpretation on things that would suit you, that would twist someone else's arm up their back and uh, line your pocket and promote your position or secure your position or please other men <clears throat> and to stay in with them, no doubt. So um, Deuteronomy um, uh, chapter 27, verse 25. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. So taking a reward again. 1 Samuel chapter 8, um, verses 1 to 3. And it came to pass when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. <coughs> <coughs> 
Now, the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in uh, Beersheba. So just because someone comes from a highly respectable family, Samuel was a great prophet. Everyone's heard of the prophet Samuel. He's a great prophet, but they didn't follow that his children were such great men. So it doesn't necessarily follow that just because a person's born from this or that or that lineage or family or, or prophet doesn't follow that they follow in the same footsteps as their fathers. And it goes on, verse 3, And his sons walk not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre money, and took bribes and perverted judgment. So then you've got Job, for the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. So those who get into bribery, the tabernacles, their dwelling places, it will um, all go wrong. So um, Psalm 26, 9, 10, Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. So bribes again. There's countless verses, basically, about bribes and the taking of gifts at the top, and this perverting judgment and everything else. He that, uh, Proverbs fifteen twenty seven. He that is greedy of gain, trouble of his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. So greed, people take these um, gifts because they are into excess and greed, and so again a gift would um, sue that purpose for a person who's into excess and greed, and therefore he would be tempted and therefore would take a gift and pervert the course of justice and everything else. So um, Proverbs 17, 8, 23. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that have it. Right? So if you've got all this money, let's say these people way up at the top, multi, multi billion trillionaires and everything else, having so much wealth, it's unbelievable. What do they do with that wealth? They buy people, they give gifts. And again, uh, here it is here, the gift is a precious stone in the eyes of him that have it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. So give a person a gift and you can get him to do just what the hell you like. Now, verse 23, a wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom, out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. So gifts again. <clears throat> a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. So promotion. Someone gives you a gift and suddenly you find yourself promoted by that gift. You are now um, walking amongst the great men. So um, Proverbs 21, 14. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom, strong wrath. So you can turn away another person's um, maybe just anger and just wrath by giving him a gift. So Proverbs 25, 14. Whoso boasts of himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. It's vanity, it's pointless. And it'll lead you nowhere, it'll bring you nothing. You won't have God's blessing. In fact, the uh, the curse of God is in, in the house of the wicked, it says. So um, Proverbs 28, 21. To have respect to persons is not good. For, for a piece of bread, that man will transgress. Now, some people would give in to sin and respect to persons and everything else to stay in with the in crowd they would stay in uh, with the in crowd have respect to persons be a man please in other words just for a piece of bread so um proverbs 29 4 the king by judgment establish establisheth the land 
but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. So you can either establish a, a good kingdom um, if you're just, but if you give in to gifts, then uh, the, the king by judgment established of the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. Well, we look at where we are now and then you have to ask yourself, is, is, <laughs> big question, is <clears throat> all of this going on at the top? Do your leaders love you? Do they love God? Do they love um, everybody else as it tells us to do in, in, the, uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, both in the Old and the, two, and the New? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy strength, and all thy might. And thou shalt love thy neighbours uh, and neighbour as thyself. This is both in the Old and New Testament. Uh, do people do that these days? Is it for the love of God and the love of fellow man? Or is it for the love of, of, uh, of uh, money? Is it the love of position? Is it the love of wealth? Is it the love of taking gifts? Is it the love of being bride? Is it the love of promotion and everything else? So Ecclesiastes 7.7, 7, surely oppression make of a wise man mad, which it does, and a gift destroyeth the heart. So a gift again. Isaiah, the list is endless. Isaiah, the princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Every one loveth gifts and followeth after reward. So it's like this in, in Isaiah's day. He saw the same thing going on. People at the top, the princes, those that come from the big uh, royal families and everything else, thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Now, it was going on at the top then. Now, why wouldn't it be going on at the top now? We, are we such a, um, a God-fearing uh, um, generation these days? No. <clears throat> so you have to ask, is this all going at the, on at the top now? It's reasonable to suggest, not to be a false accuser, to point, point the finger at anyone in particular, um, but to, um, it's reasonable to suggest there is all this going on at the top these days in the, uh, the day and age that we are now in when where corruption, where Jesus said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Well, the love of many is waxing cold because iniquity is abounding. And it's not um, God's love and God's righteousness and God's ways that are abounding. All of that is going, is deteriorating, and uh, evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. <clears throat> so why would we arrive at the conclusion that all of our leaders and great men at the top, who they, whoever they be, are um, not taking bribes and receiving gifts? <clears throat> so, um, and it goes on. So thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts. So even the stars, right? Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. They couldn't care less about the fatherless nor the widow. So um, Isaiah 5, 22, 23. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to drink, to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So again, taking a reward. So he that walketh, so Isaiah 33, 15, 16, the list again is endless. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gains of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ear from hearing of blood and shut of his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high, his place of defence, shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. So don't take a bribe and uh, don't um, love oppression and uh, things will turn out better for, for you than it does for a man who takes a bribe and takes a gift 
and um, and uh, perverts the course of justice and, and, and brings in oppression and deceit and everything else. <clears throat> so um, Ezekiel thirteen nineteen, and will ye pollute me among my people? So it must be God speaking. And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the, sl the souls alive that should not live? By your lying to my people that hear your lies. So again, lying at the top. In thee, so Ezekiel 22, 12, 13, in thee have they taken gifts to shed blood. Thou hast taken usury. That's uh, money lending, making profits through money lending. <coughs> Thou hast taken usury, so the banks, and increase, and thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbour by extortion. So forcing people into things and, and extracting money out of them and everything else, uh, thou hast uh, greedily gained of thy neighbours by extortion, and has forgotten me, saith the Lord God. Behold, therefore, I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain, which thou hast made, and at thy blood, which have been given, which have been in the midst of thee. So Amos 2.6, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Israel, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they sold the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of shoes. <laughs> for I know your manner, Amos 5, 12, for I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, they take a bribe. And they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. So Micah 7, 3, you could say the list is endless, but they're all good verses. And the fact that there's so many in the Bible, and when the Bible um, says things uh, once, twice, thrice, four times, five times, six times, seven times, and, and many more times, then you know it must be a big deal. So um, it goes on, Micah, thus, um, uh, thus they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince, is ask, the prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischief, his mischievous desire. So they wrap it up, they seal the deal. So the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire, give me money. So they wrap it up, they seal the deal. Now, instances of, bri of uh, bribery is interesting. Judges 16.5 <coughs> and uh, Delilah. So, and the lords of the Philistines came up unto her. So Delilah was um, uh, Solomon um, Samson's girlfriend, right? And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, <laughs> entice him. And uh, see wherein his great strength lieth. Get him into bed and entice him. See wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And. We will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. So suddenly we all know what happened there with um, uh, Samson's girlfriend. She enticed him. Tell me your secrets, on um, Samson. Tell me you don't love me. Tell me your secrets. So Nehemiah 6, 10, 13. Afterward I came unto the house, well this one's a bit more um, complicated, afterward I came unto the house of um, 
Shemaiah, the son of Delai, the son of um, Sabel, who was shut up. So he's indoors, I guess. And he said, let us meet together. So he talked to this man. He said, let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple. Let us shut the doors of the temple. For they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. So, and I said, um, should such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am, uh, would go unto the temple to save his life? I will not go in. So this man was trying to, um, he was a false prophet, and he's trying to lead this man um, uh, into the temple of God, place where he shouldn't go for whatever reasons. He's there for the wrong reason and not for the right reason, I guess. So verse 12, and lo, I perceive that God had not sent him. So this false prophet was not sent and he was leading him basically up the garden path, uh, up the, the wrong way in order to try to um, pin something on him, in order to smear his good name. And then they could bring some kind of accusation against him and, and everything else. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambale had hired him. So he'd had been, this man had been paid, in other words, to be a false prophet. So again, you have a, a prophet, a false prophet, um, taking a bribe and taking a gift and therefore prophesying a lie in uh, telling this man uh, to go into the temple of God for the wrong reasons and not the right reasons. And, and therefore, was, was he hired? <clears throat> that I should be afraid <coughs> and do so and sin and that they might um, have matter uh, for an evil report that they might reproach me. So again, the list is endless. And uh, to go on, you have um, Judas, Matthew twenty six fifteen, and uh, and said unto him, the priest, I guess, said unto him, no, um, Judas saying to them and said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they uh, covenanted, make an agreement with him, covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And then you have Matthew 27, 3 to 9. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And that's your problem, not ours. You betrayed him as innocent blood. Your problem, not mine. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the piece, the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and uh, bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was the field that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. So taking of bribes and taking of a gift um, for um, Judas. So Mark fourteen eleven, and when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he saw how he might conveniently betray him. Luke 22, 5, and they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And uh, just one more, Matthew 28, 12 to 15. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. Now the soldiers were, were in this one, they were put there to guard the tomb where Jesus was placed, where after Jesus was crucified. He was placed in a tomb. They rolled a stone, a stone over the doorway of the tomb, and they put these soldiers in 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 the in charge to make sure no one came and stole the body 
during the night and all this sort of thing. So um, it's it's about that. And when they were assembled with the elders, these these soldiers, no doubt, and had taken counsel, they gave them la they gave large money unto the soldiers, <clears throat> these soldiers that were guarding Jesus' tomb, right? Saying, "Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept." And if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. So these high priests, these Pharisees, giving uh, these soldiers money, and even if it comes to the governor's ear, we will persuade him, right, men of power at the top, we will persuade him and secure you. We back this up. So they took the money and did as they were taught, and this saying is commonly reported amongst the Jews until this day. So um, again, uh, money... And bribery, so just um, some a, uh, a few verses really by what's in the whole Bible. There's other stories where bribery at the top, story of Balaam in particular is a really good one. He was, um, he was bribed and uh, in the end gave in to bribery and uh, lost his life over it. So it was a sad end for those who took a bribe. And um, Balaam being an example of that, and that's another story because it's got too long now. But if you want a good story about um, uh, bribery, Balaam is a, is a good example. At first, didn't give in to bribery. <coughs> and uh, though um, uh, the reason he didn't give in, because we all know the story of Balaam's, Balaam's ass, so the ass spoke to him and stopped him, he was on his way to go and take a bribe. God had told him not to take a bribe and uh, not to take a gift. And the gift came in the form of both money and position and power and everything else. And uh, God had, um, had uh, sent an angel to stop um, Balaam, who was on his way to take a bribe. God had told him to wait until God told him what to say to um, Balak the king at the time, king of, um, of uh, Moab. And uh, Balaam uh, uh, didn't wait for God, for God's counsel and for God's um, voice, God telling him what he should say to Balak, <coughs> but um, gave in to his lust and gave in to a, 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 the promise of a gift for position, for promotion and everything else, the, the king um, of, of Moab, Balak, um, taking him to higher and higher um, and, and mixing him and mixing him with higher and higher and more and more important people and offering him great positions of wealth and, and money and position and everything else. But um, he getting on his donkey to go and give in to this lust, right, for power, wealth and money and everything else to give in to a gift and a bride. And all this, and, and they wanted him to curse God's people, but God was telling him to bless God's people. <clears throat> so um, God sent an angel uh, with a sword drawn, and it was this angel with his sword drawn that stopped the, um, uh, the, the donkey could see it, right, this angel. But you picture Balaam was in blindness, right? He was giving in to his lust. So he was um, out of God's spirit and in the flesh. But the donkey, it was merely, um, uh, Balaam was riding this donkey. The donkey could see this angel stood in his pathway with a sword drawn. And so then we all know the story of how Balaam's ass spoke to Balaam. And Balaam was stopped in his tracks and, and God telling him to go and bless Israel God's people, in other words, at the time, they were God's people. They're not so much God's people now, but they were God's people then and going God's way then. So God blessing the children of Israel and not cursing the children of Israel. And when Balaam went to um, Balak, instead of um, cursing God's people, right, as Balak would have him do, uh, Balak taking him um, to um, different um, levels a position and wealth. Well, if you won't do it for this um, this much wealth or this position, maybe I could promote you to a higher position and give you even greater riches. Then will you curse God's people? But God said, 
bless God's people. Then Balaam taken to another level up further up this mountain and then looking over at the children of God of that day. And Balak saying, well, I'll give you all of this. I'll give you all of this position. I'll give you all of this money. I'll give you all of this wealth. You'll be a great man, but curse God's people. Well, God, he no doubt had feared God because he'd seen this angel stood there with a sword in the way that the dog had told him, I, how can I go forward when there's an angel stood there with a sword in his hand? And that's why I, I, I can't go forward. Why are you kicking me? I've done nothing wrong. I've simply told you that there's an angel in the way with a sword and I can't go forward. And I guess uh, really the, the donkey could have saying, neither should you, it cost you your life. Well, Balaam in the end, um, on this occasion, he was a prophet. He wasn't one of the children of Israel. He come from a foreign um, nation and he ends up cursing God's people, right? He ends up blessing um, God's people because he feared God. He feared that this angel with a sword, it could cost him his life. So instead of cursing God's people for, for um, power, money, wealth, position and everything else, he blessed God's people. But the sad thing is with um, Balaam, in the end, he found another way around all of this. And um, it wasn't a case of, um, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a case of blessing or cursing God's people because the same king, even though um, uh, Balaam had um, blessed God's people and they departed, not such good friends, I guess, Balak went his way and Balaam went um, another way and Balaam had uh, blessed God's people, not cursed God's people. But later on, you kind of get a, a story that Balak came back, didn't give up, came back to Balaam, Balaam being a prophet and Balaam found a way around all of this. So in the end, Balaam found a way he fought around God in getting God himself to curse um, God's people. So very cunning, um, deceitful man. But at the same time, you picture a double-minded man, a man that had a leaning towards God, but would give in to temptation. So Balaam being a double-minded man, on the first occasion, he fears God. Uh, this angel stood there with the sword and everything else. What else could he do? He suddenly had his eyes open to the spiritual realities of giving in to a gift. And so he blessed God's people on that occasion. But the picture you get is later on that um, the same king of Moab would have come back to him. And he then found a way around God, or so he thought, in order to get in the children of Israel, the children of God, to be enticed into worshipping Baal by advising uh, the same king of Moab to um, uh, to um, get the uh, the women of uh, Moab, I think it was, to entice the children of Israel into um, worship of Baal by using uh, one of the most powerful weapons in the whole world and that weapon being a woman's um, sex weapon in enticing uh, the children of Israel into bed with these uh, with these women but um, the hook in all of that or the hooks in all of that was worship of, um, of Baal um, Peor as he's called which is um, which they say means um, Baal of Peor Peor being a mountain, <clears throat> and uh, somewhere on that mountain there was an opening, and it would appear that these women would entice the children of Israel with their um, sex weapon into eating things sacrificed unto idols and going along with their fertility rites, so worship of Baal, on the mountain uh, Peor, and uh, symbolically, it, it suggested that the, at the top of this Mount um, Peor, there was an opening, uh, again, symbolic of the sexual uh, ritual worship 
a vow that the children of Israel were enticed into, and they going along with Baal of Peor on this uh, mountain with the <clears throat> the opening um, at the top of this mountain, no doubt symbolic of sexual lust, and they going along with these fertility rites and going to bed with these women and getting sucked in by sexual worship of uh, Baal. So again, uh, this is the advice, basically, that Balaam uh, gave to the king of um, Moab um, in getting God to curse the children of Israel for their sin in uh, in worshipping Baal on Mount Peor and all this sort of stuff and getting into their um, sexual practices in worshipping um, Baal um, through these, um, these uh, Moabite women that enticed them in. Now this was, was Balaam's advice to the king of Moab in uh, getting God to curse the children of Israel, the children of God of that day. So um, again, another lesson there for um, said men of God who also get enticed, who might have a problem with uh, position, wealth and money and everything else. And uh, uh, if the devil don't get you one way, right, he'll get you another. And you might think you find a way around God, as Balaam did. Balaam had been clearly warned by this angel that drew a sword. And he no doubt feared God on that occasion, but time went by this king of um, Moab didn't appear to give up. He came back to um, Balaam and Balaam thought he'd found a way around God in getting God to curse the children of Israel, knowing that if the children of Israel were enticed into worshipping Baal through the most powerful, one of the most powerful weapons on earth, that being a woman's sex weapon, well, God would have to curse the children of Israel, wouldn't he? And Balaam had found a way around God, as men of God do. So um, if the devil don't get you one way, there's more than one way to skin a cat, you know. So great wickedness, great enticement, and a great um, uh, powerful um, day and age as far as um, take heed that no man deceive you, right, in the last days. But um, the end... Uh, Balaam wasn't a good end because um, he was in the end slain along with other kings of Midian and the picture you get is Balaam was also amongst these kings of Midian so no doubt he got his position power and wealth and uh, uh, being an advisory in, in order to get the children of Israel cursed by God using the advisory method for gain no doubt uh, in the end, cost him his life. So, a sad end all round for those that give in to um, um, bribery and taking a gift. So, praise Jesus.